He was the first president of the International Pediatric Transplant Association. He pursued excellence in training the next generation of surgeons and transplant physicians, many of whom went on to outstanding leadership positions. Dr. Nigerian made the world a better place. For those of us privileged to be part of his surgical faculty, <clears throat> he was an inspiring leader. His own reflected brilliance allowed those of us in our own areas to try new things and to advance our own fields. On the personal side, John, along with his lovely wife, Mignette, and his four boys, all larger than life, just like John, often opened their homes on Lake Harriet and the St. Croix River to the residents, faculty, and nurses with whom John worked. Those times and memories are among my fondest of our time at the university. It was amazing to go with Dr. Najarian on rounds because no matter how bad things had been all day, he would walk into the room and all of a sudden everything was fixed. He was the most amazing presence and it was his clinical acumen and his people skills that made me love working with him the most. He was a brilliant surgeon and scientist, charismatic, innovative and fearless, and a natural born leader who was able to identify nascent talent and potential that he then supported as they developed their own successful careers. He established strategic, long-standing partnerships and collaborations, such as those with Dick Simmons and David Sutherland, together changed the field of transplantation forever. In the days of his chairmanship, we felt like we were at the center of the transplant universe. He cared deeply about education and established the first transplant fellowship in the country. But probably what he would most want to be remembered for was his devotion to his family that was equally devoted to and supported him throughout his career and life. Thank you, Dr. Nigerian, from all of us who were lucky enough to know you and to learn from you. Uh, so many things that we learned, so many things that we have to be thankful for to John. John, thank you as a friend, as a student of yours. Thank you for what you did for me, for my family, for my country. Thank you. God bless you. He talked to you like he knew you uh, for decades. He really took interest in what one has to say and did it with a big smile that truly reflected his even bigger heart. I have simply benefited greatly from his humanity, generosity, kindness. I am grateful to have known him and I'm honored to be part of this tribute. Thank you. He was a great surgeon, a founding father of transplantation surgery, a scientist that believed in the dialogue between the laboratory and patient care, and an educator. He was a tough man, but he was ever so gentle with patients, especially with the children in his care. I'm honored to be part of this tribute. At the end of many of his talks, of his presentation, he would end by telling that what he was the, what he was the most proud of was all the fellows, all the surgeons that he had trained worldwide, because indeed the transplant fellowship in, in the program in Minneapolis was the, the first uh, to, to train surgeons, uh, especially uh, for transplantation. At that time, I did not really uh, fully realize the importance of that. But now, years later, after having trained uh, transplant surgeons as well, I now realize that the most important legacy from Dr. Najarian is actually this uh, essential part of our job, which is to, to train the new generation of, uh, of surgeons. There were a few people um, during the 1960s and 70s who were not prepared to accept death from organ failure, especially in the young, and then who actually did something about it. Uh, John, of course, first among many. The lasting image, I think for many of us, is of this enormous man in a white coat, hand in hand with a child, leaning over to listen to her. John, we miss you. Patients came from all over the world because of Dr. Nigerian. Had a very kind way of putting parents at ease. They had a deep trust in him and respect for him. He always provided hope. His legacy continues. I was blessed with the great privilege and honored to work with Dr. Nigerian and the children and families who came to the University of Minnesota for a transplant. I admired him because he had the common touch. 
he could talk to Walter Mondale and to Howard Cosell, but he could also talk to the scrub nurses and the techs and the man behind the counter in the coffee shop and to the frightened patient in the bed. He never forgot that he wasn't born famous. I also admired him because he loved his family. He was a dedicated father and husband, and he wore that love right out in the open where everyone could see it. I am Octavio Ruiz from Mexico. I stand up in honor of John Nigerian, a man of great vision in the field of organ transplantation. He spread all over the world through the surgeons he trained, the attitude of curiosity, leadership, enthusiasm, courage, trust, and human need towards his patients. I'm sure that in all of us who participated in this event, Big John had a great impact in our family, academic, and professional lives. John, we will join you again one day. Thank you. He was one of the best uh, leaders that I have known. He made it look easy. He was a wonderful leader, and I certainly appreciate all the surgical skills and leadership skills that I learned from him. The role model that Dr. Nigerian provided around compassion, compassion for the people he served, whether it was the smallest uh, child or to the most senior of adults, that everyone deserved the respect and the dignity and their best opportunity to rid themselves of disease. It's truly his greatest accomplishment to be that role model. So I just want to say briefly, thank you, Dr. Nigerian, for all that you've contributed to my career and those of many of us here. Uh, this is a special tribute to a very special man. Thank you very much. I'll never forget the day that Dr. Nigerian offered me <clears throat> as the only doubly board certified colorectal surgeon and general surgeon in the United States he offered me the opportunity to head up the division of proctology at the University of Minnesota. I turned to John and I said, John, I said, that's a nice offer, but I think we should change it to the division of colon and rectal surgery. <clears throat> With that, he looked at me and he says, you're absolutely right. And uh, from that day forward, we've had the division of colon and rectal surgery at the University of Minnesota. And I'll never be able to thank John enough for making that happen because it has changed the way things have been done in colorectal surgery around the United States and around the world. Dr. John Nigerian was an extraordinary surgical pioneer, motivated by the transformative effects of successful transplantation. He worked very hard to expand its availability to even more patients, especially those with serious comorbidities or physical barriers, most notably diabetics and children. As a father and pediatrician, I'm most grateful for his efforts to provide transplants life-saving gift to any child in need, but especially for infants. I trained under Dr. John Nigerian at the University of Minnesota between 1971 and 1973. Thereafter, I returned to the Howard University Transplant Center, developed and ran that program for 30 years. While there, I conceptualized and developed National MOTEP, a program that uh, nationally increased, doubled the number of minority organ tissue transplant donors. Because of this work, uh, in 2021, I received the Merck Society of Transplant Surgeons Pioneer Award. This became one of the proudest moments of my life. And I dedicate this honor to Dr. John Nigerian, a great teacher, and a great friend. John's greatest strength, I feel, was his organizing ability and his implicit trust in those who worked under him. You had to be good and going on to greatness because you were on his team. His legacy about pushing the boundaries of what can be achieved in transplantation will guide the next generations of professionals in this field. When I was starting out as a fellow, one of my first transplants was with Dr. Nigerian. We took the clamps off uh, this kidney and all the needle holes started bleeding. 
he saw me respond with anxiety and he quickly put some packing in there with his big hands holding the kidney. Relax, Steve, he said with his very sonorous voice and I could feel the tension leave the room. It's going to be fine, you'll see. And he repeated a moment later, it's going to be fine. To this day, now 22 years later, whenever I take the clamps off and if I need to reach for the packing, I hear that voice in my head. Relax, it's going to be fine. Thank you, Dr. Najarian. I have a tremendous respect and admiration for the people that inspire me and train me. Dr. Najarian created an incredible school of transplant surgeons. And now I have friends all over the country and all over the world, people that share with me that those years of training at the University of Minnesota. I remember the early years where all the famous transplant surgeons in the world stopped by the University of Minnesota to see what we were doing there and to learn from each other. It was a wonderful time and uh, it's thanks to the University of Minnesota and to Dr. Nigerian that I have had a wonderful career. I'm extremely grateful. As president of the AST, I'm reminded on a daily basis that I walk in the shadow of giants. Professor Nigerian was an inspiration for many in the field. His contributions really spanned medicine and transplant surgery. He was not a timid leader. He was known for taking on clinically challenging cases that perhaps no one else would dare to perform. He was an innovator who pushed the limits and he had a vision that extended far beyond the gaze of many. That inspiration set by Dr. Nigerian and his contemporaries continues to inspire us. Not only did Dr. Nigerian start a transplant program, he built a transplant team. And by team, I don't mean just physicians, surgeons, and the scientists, but people like me, the nurses. The nurses who took care of transplant patients wherever they were, surgery, in the hospital, in the clinic, and even following them at home. Often, if you saw patients with Dr. Najarian in clinic, he'd put his hand on your shoulder or your arm, look at the patient, and say, you listen to her, she's one of our best. That provided the patient with great reassurance. It might not have been true, but what nurse doesn't like to hear that she's the best? Dr. Nigerian fathered our transplant program and then went on to spread it worldwide. It was a privilege to be part of it. Our patients needed better immune suppression than we had at that time. And I decided I would make an antiserum to lymphoblasts. This antiserum could help prevent and also reverse rejection. Uh, Dr. Nigerian enthusiastically supported me and we produced a serum which we developed in a, a lab that uh, he allowed me to make on, on the transplant floor. The first serum that we produced uh, was given to a patient, uh, a woman who was having rejection. She improved almost immediately after getting the antiserum and this was the beginning of the Minnesota ALJ. We, we had a lot of good times together and he was a, a, a wonderful chairman and a, a great colleague. He was a consummate teacher and he was a wonderful physician that all of his patients loved. They trusted him. I used to come and report him every day and I guess he got tired of it because at one point he smiled across from his big desk and he just told me that I didn't have to report to him once a week, but to just go down into the lab and do good, which was down in the bottom of the Mayo building. So that's where I went and that's where I stayed for two years. The other good piece of advice had to do with scrubbing in with other surgeons particularly scrubbing in with Dr. Nigerian. I had had an Italian dressing salad for lunch. And I, I think I was a junior resident. And so I was stuck, I think probably holding up a right upper quadrant or something like that. Um, but in any case, uh, 
Dr. Najarian kept going, phew, phew. And I had no idea what he was doing, but after surgery, he pulled me aside and he very calmly and delicately told me that out of consideration for my fellow surgeons and nursing staff at an operating table, I should never eat garlic or have Italian dressing before walking into the operating room. So as a final note, here's a picture of Dr. Najarian and me taken, uh, a picture taken by one of the patients um, that Dr. Najarian gave me on some occasion. And I will always remember my time with him. We all came to the University of Minnesota to learn transplant surgery from Dr. Najarian. But he was a role model, a family man. In fact, he thought of each of us trainees as one of his extended family members. He was so proud of each and every one of us, knowing that we would go out and innovate to improve the quality of life of transplant patients. To me, he stood out as a visionary and he applied it to his educational and training programs, the Minnesota Surgical Research Machine, and significantly advancing clinical surgery. He made things happen. He was a natural leader and had presence. When he was in the room, you knew it. I also saw a deep thinker. An example of that was reflected in his American surgical presentation and writing of the skill, science, and soul of the surgeon. He recruited interesting and talented people and he elevated them by the high standards he set and they helped elevate others. And he was proud of everyone's accomplishments. He supported young people and encouraged mentorship by his faculty. As such, there is a kind of kinship among all from his program. On a personal note, well, he had a great sense of humor. I also saw a man who cared about people. He was a native Californian, but he connected with all that Minnesota had to offer and was a difference maker for the people of Minnesota. And most importantly, he was a family man. He loved his family. Well, those are just a few thoughts. I appreciate sharing them about a man of meaning and of a career and life well lived. Dr. Nigeria has been a formidable leader and a giant in surgery, but to me has been my best mentor and a friend. I love his relation with patients, especially pediatric, his commitment to teaching, the ability to delegate, but still keep control, his mentorship. Dr. Nigerian has been a formidable man, and I love him dearly, and I will always miss. I may be one of the few individuals paying tribute to the late Dr. Nigerian who did not train at the University of Minnesota. However, it has been my privilege to become the editor-in-chief of the journal he created, Clinical Transplantation. We have tried to maintain the high standards that he set for the journal with the goal of making the journal useful for practitioners working actively in the field. The journal is now affiliated with the ASTS and uh, AST, and more recently with SATA, the Society for the Advancement of Transplant Anesthesia. We also published a couple of years ago, a 42 article update from the AST ID community of practice. We believe that Dr. Nigerian would have approved. On a personal note, I always enjoyed my interactions with Dr. Nigerian at national and international meetings, and particularly enjoyed traveling with him from Cusco, Peru to Lima, and then to Houston on our way back from a Latin American Congress. We had the chance to speak at length, and it was a treat to hear stories about his life in football, research, and transplantation. He was a great surgeon and a visionary and inclusive leader. Thank you. For me, Dr. Najarian fostered a truly fun, caring, and respectful intellectual atmosphere. From the day I met him in 1987 
through all the cutting edge newsletters, scholarly papers, speeches, transplant projects, and chapters of his memoir that we worked on together through decades. I am forever grateful and I will never stop missing him and Mignette. I'm really excited that we're having this symposium to remember and celebrate Dr. Nigerian's uh, life and work. I was recently at the fellows meeting in San Diego, hence the background, and I wanted to share that I was um, remembering Dr. Nigerian and how much it meant to him to teach his trainees and how inspiring it was to be around all of them. So uh, with that remembrance, I just wanted to wish everyone well and um, best in the coming year. I've met Dr. Nigerian already at the end of his career uh, when he would attend Grand Rounds and Sid was in the first row. At the time, I was a medical student and later on a resident. I see, I've seen him rarely in the operating room at that point, but I feel I learned some of his experiences and his knowledge through faculty that he trained and he trained multiple uh, faculty across the globe. Um, he's a legend for Division of Transplantation as well as Department of Surgery at University of Minnesota and beyond uh, in the uh, United States as well as the world. I'd like to pay my respects to Dr. Nigerian. He was a great mentor, great guy. Love the his style of you know letting you do whatever you could do in the operating room until he got there, and then he was the man. You know he was one of these people that done sort of amazing things all his life. You know, including you know being a star football player. He was you know got a program started here at the University of California, San Francisco. Uh, in kidney transplantation and then as he always said he was the youngest chair ever and he would say that <clears throat> somebody asked him well how do you decide to become chair and he said I was born chair. <laughs>